Welcome to Practical Business Technology, where we keep you in the know about technology's impact on business. Today's show is sponsored by the Maricopa County Bar Association, and our host is Dave Kinsey, author and owner of Total Networks. Hi, I'm Stephanie. And I'm Dave. And today we're going to talk about document management and practice management as it relates to managing your documents. Specifically for the legal industry. Yes. So, although other industries could use the similar tools. Yeah, well, so I guess the document management part is pretty universal, but I'm, um, you know, this was a podcast sponsored by Maricopa County Bar Association, and so uh, most of the our podcasts have been pretty industry agnostic. This one, yeah, I guess the document management one is universal, but the practice management is going to be specifically to legal. Sure. So maybe we should just start with what is your definition, Dave, of document management? Sure. Well, everybody has documents, right? And then, and so inherently you have to have some system to management. So even if you don't say you don't have document management, um, say your documents are all stored in your My Documents and maybe you have them all in one folder, you don't even have subfolders. Well, that's a document management system. It's not a very good one. No, it's not very organized. No, and then it's obviously on the extreme, you have things like iManage and NetDocuments, which are formal document management systems, which have all sorts of features and capabilities. So um, there's a continuum. There's no one right way or one right solution for managing your documents. It sort of depends on what your needs are, how sophisticated you are, and you know, what you're, where you're going to get the, the value from. Sure. So um, just in the legal industry, why is it that so many law firms like to use something more than just a file folder structure? Sure. Well, the legal industry is very document intensive. There are several document intensive industries, but I'm kind of hard pressed to think of one that's more document intensive than legal. Um and so when you think, you know, on the uh, sort of the pinnacle of the document management systems out there, one of the things where they really excel is in product reuse. And so you don't really want to have to reinvent the wheel when you've got, so you say you've got some very com complicated legal matter and you remember, you know what, Joe or Sally had, you know, it was Sally, Sally, Sally had that, you know, uh, re ran into that issue and, you know, she's an attorney that works that I know in my firm. And then she worked on this, oh, geez, was it two years ago? And, you know, and, and whatnot. So you can sort of think, oh, you know, you could so search off of, off of document author or last person to edit it. Or you might search off a of practice area or matter or, you know, the type of document. That's one of the main things is the type of document. Like, is it a pleading? Is it a letter? Is it an you know, agreement? Is it what have you? So is one of the advantages of something more than just file folder structure is you can search by things besides just the name of the document. Yes, I think so. That that's I mean, yes, I think I think that that is the uh kind of the the main reason or the main differentiator in the very high-end document management systems is the very robust indexing, very robust tagging uh so that you can find things that you know, you may not be able to find so easily in, in just a, a file folder structure. Okay, that's good to know. Um, so what about some of the things now like SharePoint that comes with your Office 365? Is that just the same as my documents? SharePoint is a it, it's a it's a well and I'm thinking particularly SharePoint online is a sophisticated document. I mean, you could, it's a document repository. And so you can build a document management system around it, um, you know, for, for storing things. One of the big advantages of Office 365 in general is, you know, they keep adding new features all the time. And one thing that's really powerful is the concept of document co-authoring. This is when you have multiple people in the document at the same time. And that's one thing you can do with documents that, sh that are sh stored in SharePoint Online or, or OneDrive. Um, this is something that, you know, for people that are familiar with Google Docs, Google Docs had this first, right, and had it for a long time. And, and then Microsoft was sort of playing catch up. Well, now I'd say they're pretty much a parody 
um, in terms of uh, working with documents, in terms of co-authoring, if you have documents that are in the system um, in, a, in, a, in SharePoint Online. So that's one of the features. There's, there's a lot of other features there's, you know, there, but that's probably one of the most powerful ones. Well, that's good. I, you know, today, especially with so many people working remotely, working from home, it's important that your documents are accessible. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you are still one of those companies that have a lot of paper documents, that's probably not going so well for you if you are working from home and your papers are in the office. Yeah, I think for a long time people realized that the file room is not really a good thing. You know, it takes up a lot of real estate. It's not very efficient to search. You certainly can't do this kind of sophisticated searching through that because it's not even electronic. Um, so people have been trying to get rid of them for, for some time, and some people have succeeded better than others. And we can talk about the strategy there. I mean, the, the main strategy to not have, you know, to, to not have that file room is to stop putting stuff in there. Okay, so basically you, you look at your workflow, you look at your process so that you're not generating documents that would go into there. And then also any documents that come into the office, say via mail, um, that you scan and shred. And you typically assign people to do that and you give them a desktop scanner so they don't have to get up from their desk and, and whatnot. Um, it's, so if you're, if, you, um, if you're still have that file room and, you're, and that file room is getting bigger, um, you, you're doing this by how you have your processes designed. Oh, so that's a good idea that the first step would be to just anything new, start doing that electronically, and then you can come up with a game plan for scanning and yeah, uh, the, the, archiving all the old stuff. Two-thirds of the battle is stopping new stuff going in there. Because if you have stopping new stuff going in there, just over time, if you do nothing, the documents that are in your, your file room will become less important because they will get older and let, let, you know, more, less likely to be used. If you have, you have to, you have to do that first. If you have the pro processes down where you're not creating, you know, you know, building on your file room, um, then you can tackle, okay, do we want to maybe scan active cases and, um, you know, scan and shred that because that would give us the best bang for the buck in terms of, wow, we can get this stuff quickly or high value cases, you know, maybe this case has gone dormant, but man, if we, if that thing goes, goes live again, we stand to get, you know, get a lot of money for, I don't know, whatever, you know, there's, you have, you have to figure that out, but first figuring out how to stop it. Well, and each company needs to think about their retention policy. Sure. And, um, there might be some firms that just had a procedure of every, you know, say it's seven years. Well, if it's older than seven years, just have those boxes shredded. So you're right. Over time, you would eventually just be working in your new way. Yeah, you want to be very careful. You know, law firms obviously have to be very careful because the documents truly are not, the, do, not do not really belong to the lawyers. They belong to the clients. And so... Uh, sure, each business needs to identify what their requirements are. Yeah, I'd say as a general rule... <laughs> I found in the legal industry, um, because of all the the reasons why, once again, the, the wheels of justice turn slowly, right? <laughs> so, you know, some of these cases can go on for decades, and you know, and um, and once again, the documents are not their own. Law firms tend to keep this stuff forever, and so uh, yet again, having a good reason to make sure that gives you more reason to make sure that you don't um, continue to. Uh, you know, to grow that. Now, and that's not saying you can't have uh, processes. I know many law firms that do have uh, processes to manage it. And so basically when cases are over, they have a formal process where, okay, here's your documents, giving you a link to it where you can download it and whatnot. And so you've done your due diligence to hand the things over. And I think that's a good thing. So, I mean, you know, you want to look at it holistically and, and how you're, how you're, how you're shrinking it for things that you know you don't need and then how you're not growing your paper part. Yeah. And then I, you know, of course this plays into how your backups are done because if you've got um, obligations to save files for a certain amount of time, you should check to make sure that your backups are in sync with that requirement. Sure, absolutely. So uh, let's talk a little bit now about practice management then. Mm -hmm. What... What are some of the common practice management solutions that include document management? 
Uh, I would say there's a lot of them that include some form of it. it. You know, some of them are better than others in terms of what you're trying to do. And particularly that part that I talked about, that's sort of the pinnacle of document management, that's robust searching capability. There are many document management systems that will uh, allow you to, you know, you're, you're, you have the, your clients and matters and your time or your billing and all that, and you can link documents to, uh, to those matters or to those clients and then bring those up and work on them uh, in, a, in a reasonable fashion. Um, there's a number of document management systems that will do that. But the robust searching, there's not a lot of them that have really robust searching built in. I'd so say, does it depend on the size of the firm that, you, you know, do you see that, that the smaller firms might just use what's built into the practice management, whereas larger firms use something more like iManage? Or is it really depend on the needs and style of each company? Yeah, I'd say uh, the firms we do with tend to be more sophisticated. So we, we, uh, we, we have a lot of systems that have, you know, to have either separate document management systems or have good ones that have robust, you know, in terms of like some applications that actually have pretty decent built in document management systems, I would think of like perfect law. It's actually got some unique uh, capabilities and it's got a pretty robust integrated one. Um, I'd say pro law. Prolaw not only has uh, some, you know, un some good document management capabilities, it even has some uh, document generation, kind of a la HotDocs, which HotDocs is a document generation, uh, you know, basically uh, you figure out di different, it's templates and whatnot, you know, for, for legal matters. Uh, Prolaw has some of those capabilities. You know, one of the things about both, both of those programs I mentioned are, um, they're not really cloud. <laughs> Um, technically they, you know, you can get, you can cloudify them. Um, but they're, they're not built when I, when I look at like pure cloud, I'm thinking like, you know, you access it via web browser and you don't have to build a whole separate infrastructure. Technically, I think with uh, perfect law they have where you can, you can subscribe, you know, to the online model. I don't know anybody that does, but so, anyway. I mean, you're, what you're saying is you can put anything in Azure. But yes. it's not a native app that you just can from any browser access. Yeah, Azure being, you know, infrastructure as a service. So basically where you have servers in the cloud. Right. So it's not true cloud, but it's like I have servers on in my office. I'm going to just – I'm not going to change it. I'm just going to pick it up and throw it in the cloud. So it doesn't fundamentally change it other than, you know, you, you get some benefits of, okay, if your office burns down or whatnot, you don't have to worry about that and whatnot. You get some extra expenses. Um, but it doesn't fundamentally change the way things really work. You know, there's Azure, AWS, Google Cloud Services, whatnot, but yeah. So are there practice management solutions that integrate with things like iManage or EDOCs? Absolutely. Absolutely. I would say, you know, when you look at, like, say, iManage or eDocs, which actually are, uh, I'd say those are native cloud applications. You can buy them in pure cloud form. Um, and, uh, you know, iManage used to be, solely on on premise uh but they went cloud um a few years ago and you know and it's gotten good over the past couple of years so you know both of the solutions are full, are full cloud and, and are good the um i'd say those applications yeah I, you you have and pretty much any practice management just about you should be able to integrate with um let's say i manage a net documents and when you say integrate um really you're looking at okay i can i get the the clients and matters out of that practice management system to automatically generate the workspaces in in the in the uh, document management system because a typical document management system is going to be structured by say you know client matter and doc type is you know and so you need to be able to have a way to do that and and uh, pretty much any uh, just about any practice management solution you should be able to do that with. Okay. Now I will say, um, you know. When I look at, you know, what's my vision or, you know, total networks approach to IT, we want to end up with native cloud as much as possible. And I said this in some previous podcasts, because that's where you get, that, that's, that's the promised land where you want to, want to get to where you basically have your web, point your web browser there and it, and it works. Because then what you have is you have these application developers developing, 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 and you're getting the benefit of new features and functionality 
and you don't have to be you know worry about the management of the servers and the patching and all the stuff that's going to break and and whatnot um so that's that's really where we want to be and so something like say office 365 is an example it's not legal or whatnot it's just it's pure cloud um and it really was initially just kind of email and whatnot but it's so much more than that now like you said with sharepoint online and, and microsoft teams but so there, there are different pure cloud applications out there. People are probably you know familiar with Clio if you're in the legal industry. That was kind of a leader in the in the cloud uh, space. There, what I'm th- I'm really interested in, uh, you know, I've done a lot, been, been doing a lot of work, kind of looking at this and seeing how the software's evolved. Zola Suites really got caught my mind now because they've really developed a pretty unique application that has full financials and the and the front office type stuff where it's 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 you know there's a number of them out there but that's one that's kind of caught my eye and they do have some document management stuff capable you know built in but once again their integrated document management system today is not where i manage or net documents are um you know neither is clio clio doesn't have a you know document management system that's any more robust than that but if you want the more robust you can still integrate you can still integrate with high management net documents it's just you know there's complexity and cost that that, that, you know that you get with that so but you know i will say that is going to be in some cases the way of the world with some cloud applications is you're going to have some integration between different applications um yeah so once again there's no perfect solution here but you know it continues to evolve all right. Uh, any other closing thoughts? Well, I'd say that document management, you're doing it when, you know, you have a document management system, you know, you should be aware that you have a document management system, right? Everyone does. And it is a really good time to look at and see, am I getting out of it what I need to? And by that, I mean, is the is my workflow reasonable? Can I get the documents that I need? Do I have some ability reasonable to, to, to have product reuse um, to where it's working? And if the answer to all those is yes, that you're pretty much good, that's that's good. That's It's always good to be asking those questions and it's always good to be asking, you know, ask, because the technology continues to evolve and your business continues to evolve and you wanna make sure that you're, you're keeping up. All right, very good. Well, thank you, Dave. Thank you.